In applications, when we're given two points, we make a distinction between working with points that are in between those two points and working with points that are outside of those two points. Let me explain what I mean. For certain ages, children's growth is approximately linear. So the average six-year-old is three foot nine, the average 11-year-old is four foot eight. We could write the equation of a line that goes through those two points. So our variables are the child's age in months, that's going to be our independent variable, and the child's height in inches, that's going to be our dependent variable. The equation we'll get, well, we'll find the slope, and the points that we're given are age is 72 months, height is 45 inches, and age is 132 months, height is 56 inches. So to write down an equation relating these two variables, we're going to first find the slope. So it's the change in our dependent variable over the change in our independent variable, which is going to be 11 over 60. Our slope is 11 sixtieths. And now 2, we're going to write the equation in point slope form. Now we can choose either point. I tend to prefer the point on the left because it gives us positive numbers more often. We'll have h minus the given h is the slope we found, 11 sixtieths times a minus the given a. Now, there's a question, though. For what values of a and h does this really make sense? If we take a value of a that is between our given values, we're doing what's called interpolating. Notice we see this inter-syllable at the beginning of this word. That inter means between. We're interpolating if we're between the given values. And that's probably going to make sense. We might be a little bit off, but there's only so bad it can get if we're interpolating. If A is outside that range, we are extrapolating. Notice we see the syllable extra. That syllable extra means outside. If we're extrapolating, we're outside the given values. That might get weird. What do I mean? Suppose we want to use this equation to find the age of an 8-year-old. So that's 96 months. That's nicely between 72 and 132. So we'll take the age 8 and plug it in. On the right-hand side, we just have a bunch of arithmetic to work out, which sounds like a job for my calculator. I'm just going to enter my 11 sixtieths times my 96 minus 72. That's 4.4. And then we'll add 45 to both sides and get h is 49.4. So we predict a height of 49.4 inches. Is that reasonable? Well, that's 48 inches is 4 feet. So that's 4 feet 1.4 inches. That seems reasonable. That seems like a reasonable height for an 8-year-old. On the other hand, look what would happen if we tried to use this equation to predict the height of a 20-year-old. Now, you should feel like something really weird is a bit going on with this because I told you that this was something we would use to predict the height of children. Most people would say that a 20-year-old is not a child. But let's see what happens if we try this. 20 years is how many months? 240 months. So let's see. We'll have h minus 45 is 11 sixtieths times 240 minus 72. 
h minus 45 is 11 sixtieths times 240 minus 72, 30.8. Add 45 to both sides. H is 75.8. 75.8 divided by 12. Oh, that's like, that's over six feet. Doesn't look like a completely unreasonable height for a person, but that's definitely not the average person's height. If we convert it to feet and inches, that's six feet, 3.8 inches, that's almost six foot four. Not the height of the average person. That would be an extraordinarily tall person. It would get even worse if we tried to use this equation to predict the height of a 30-year-old. So what do we notice? When we interpolate, we'll typically get pretty reasonable values. When we extrapolate, we might get values that are more unreasonable.